of the Sorcerer's Stone. The what? what? Who made Emma Watson audition for the part of Hermione? How did Rupert Grinch go out of his way to get the part of Ron? And did Daniel Radcliffe almost quit acting before landing the role of his life? Let the magic begin with the Harry Potter cast's epic audition stories. Emma Watson. Now I'm kind of sort of easing off a bit and I feel a bit more happy with the way that I'm doing things. These days, Emma, just like her character Hermione Granger, is a household name. But almost 20 years ago, gee, it's hard to even believe that it was that long ago. She was just another girl auditioning for the Harry Potter series. And even back then, she already knew that she wanted to be an actress. As a child, I loved being on stage. I loved singing. I loved the lights. I loved the adrenaline. Watson shared, I even loved learning lines. I was completely obsessive. But it wasn't Emma's obsession with acting that made her try for the role in Harry Potter. The most critical thing was a push from her theater teachers who convinced her to audition and drew casting agents' attention to the girl. And it was done on a Thursday in my school gym. And it was exactly like a drama class, you know? After eight auditions, producer David Heyman called Emma to his office and said that she was a preferred candidate for the role. Before I could obsess over what preferred meant, they took a photograph of Daniel Radcliffe, Rupert Grint, and me. And it was broadcast on the internet that we had been cast in Harry Potter, the actress said. The next thing she knew, she was famous. And it's hardly surprising. Just look how cute she was in this screen test. I checked this out first term for a bit of light reading. This is light. Shut up. If Filch comes around the corner any second now. And little Rupert mimicking her. Adorable. But we'll get back to him later. Meanwhile, let's proceed to Tom Felton. Draco Malfoy is a slick haired evil. You might think that all the Harry Potter actors were huge fans of the series and knew the books by heart. Well, maybe some of them were, but definitely not Tom. I was probably the only child in the country who auditioned, not having a clue what Harry Potter was per se. The actor once shared, Can you believe it? You might be wondering how he managed to get the role then. Well, he did it by pulling off a Draco Malfoy. Let me explain. The boy knew that all the kids auditioning with him were being asked which scene from the books they wanted to see in the movies the most. Clearly, Tom didn't have a scene in mind because he didn't read the books, but he had a plan. The guy next to me says something about Gringotts and goblins. So I was just like, yeah, those, <laughs> those, <laughs> those Gringotts sound awesome. Yeah, yeah. And, and the director saw straight through me. So I, I think that actually helped me get the part of Draco. Yeah, yeah. This is definitely something Malfoy would do. Tom was glad that he got the role of Draco. As he says, had he been cast as Harry or Ron, he'd be a completely different person in real life. After all, playing the main character meant enormous pressure behind the scenes. And Tom thinks that it would have significantly affected him. Well, he's probably right. And we also couldn't be happier that he got the role of Draco instead of any other one. Helena Bonham Carter. It's uh, a big character to play that's totally unsubtle. Not that this amazing actress had to audition for her role. I mean, isn't it evident that she was perfect as the vicious Bellatrix? But she still had to prepare before coming to the set. She attended a so-called wand school, learning to use her wand like a pro. And after hours upon hours of vigorous training, the actress even got a blister on her finger. Helena also did her best to develop Bellatrix's character by making her downright terrifying, totally savage, but at the same time, quite sexy. But here's the catch. However impressive she was in the role, Bonham Carter wasn't supposed to play Bella. Helen McCrory initially got the role, but she pulled out when she got pregnant. So they came to me, Helena recalled, and I loved it. I love magic. I love witches, and I love the whole Harry Potter world. I was all too happy to play a witch. Interestingly, after giving birth to her baby, Helen McCrory still got cast in Harry Potter and played Draco's mother, Narcissa Malfoy, in The Half-Blood Prince. What can I say? She got pregnant just in time for the perfect casting of these two characters. Matthew Lewis. It was cool. It was a lot of fun. Before becoming Neville Longbottom, he was just a boy from Leeds who read all the Harry Potter books available at that time. He was such a big fan. So when Lewis heard about open auditions at the Queen's Hotel in Leeds, he knew that he wanted to be there. We'd been there for about four or five hours. Um, we queued for a long time. While they were sitting there and patiently waiting for their turn, Matthew's mother asked the boy if he really wanted to do it or if he preferred just to go home. But Matthew was determined to stay. When he didn't hear back after a few days, he assumed that he didn't get the role. He was like, okay, better luck next time. But two months later, Matthew got a call. He was asked to go to London for a screen test with the director, Chris Columbus, because he got the role of Neville. It was exciting stuff. I knew all about Neville as I'd read the books, he said. So he certainly 
knew how to impress the film crew. Uh, very scared of his own shadow. He's very scared. Over time, Neville's character development, from a shy and scared boy to a hero and inspiration for everyone, felt very special to Matthew and all Harry Potter fans. And now the actor feels that it's the best role he could have hoped for. Ivana Lynch. Well, my mom didn't want me to go. She thought I... I didn't have a hope. The Luna Love Good actress had a special connection with J.K. Rowling even before being cast in the franchise. When she was 11 or 12, Ivana was battling an eating disorder, and at some point, it completely took over her life. The only thing that could actually take my attention apart from that was the Harry Potter series, Lynch shared, but she didn't only read books and watch the films. Ivana also became a pen pal with J.K. Rowling herself. The book author's kindness made the girl want to live again and overcome all her health struggles. And when Ivana heard the casting call for Luna. She was right there, even though she didn't have any professional credits or acting training to her name. I only went out of love for the books and a fierce desire to tell Luna's story the right way, she shared. Take a look at her audition tape. Unfortunately, all my shoes have mysteriously disappeared. Personally, I suspect Nargos are behind me. Who else could play the weird but kind-hearted Luna? Even for J.K. Rowling herself, Ivana was the actress for the part, and the author even had the actress in her head while writing Luna's scenes in the final book. I, I know I, I'm going to play this character the best. I know her the best. And I was like, if you don't pick me, that's okay, that's your choice, but you're gonna be wrong. Looks like they liked her attitude, because they called her back in three days. Way to go, Ivana, Rupert Grint. I thought it was going to be disgusting, but actually quite nice. Just like Ivana, he hadn't done any professional acting, except for a couple of parts in school plays, before landing the role of Ron Weasley. But it didn't stop him from sending his audition tape twice. After all, Rupert was a huge Harry Potter fan, and he knew that he wanted to be in the film. So as soon as he had heard about an opportunity to audition, he seized it. I sent in one application and had heard nothing back, the actor recalled, so I figured there was nothing to lose by being a little inventive. The second audition tape he sent consisted of three parts. First, Rupert rapped about himself. It sounded a bit like this. Uh, hello, man. My name's Rupert <laughs> Like this and don't think I stink. Then he dressed up as his drama teacher, who happened to be a woman, and presented a little sketch. And finally, he read some Ron Weasley dialogue. Well, that's what I call an imaginative approach to attaining your goal. Rupert's self-marketing paid off because this creative audition tape convinced the casting agents and the movie director to give him a call after they saw it. So a few screen tests later, Rupert got the part. But I'm not really sure why they didn't call him back right away after the first tape he sent. I mean, just look at his face. It's Ron Weasley in the flesh. Bonnie Wright. My bestest friends think that it's great experience. In a way, Ginny Weasley became an inspiration for many young girls. After all, she got married to her childhood crush. And for Bonnie Wright, the inspiration was her older brother, who, as she says, was her Ron in real life. Reading the Harry Potter series, her brother said that she reminded him of Ginny from the books, and it convinced the young girl to go audition for the part when she heard the casting call, even though she never considered acting professionally and didn't have any roles before. But for the series, it didn't matter if you were famous and experienced or not. All that mattered was being right for the part and being willing to learn. And this is something Bonnie had from the very beginning. The first time I stepped on set, I was completely lost, the young actress shared. Actually, not lost exactly, but completely amazed at the scale of it all. I just loved learning. Didn't she do a fantastic job as Ginny? Ray finds. It's a good reference for that little, only isolated boy who's decided he will not be defeated. While all the kids had to audition for their parts, adult actors were just offered a chance to join the franchise. And can you believe it? Some of them didn't want to do it. Ray Fiennes was one of those who initially turned down a role in Harry Potter. The thing is, he never read the books and only saw the first film. He didn't really like it, so when he was offered the role of Voldemort, Fiennes assumed that it wouldn't be something that appealed to him. Out of ignorance, I just sort of thought, this isn't for me, the actor said. Quite stupidly, I resisted. I was hesitant. It took ages for him to agree to the part. Rafe's sister was the one to convince him to join the franchise. At the time, she had three little kids who were fans of the series, so she knew it was huge. She said to him that he had to do it, and he finally agreed. It was a good thing that he did, because Fines was utterly terrifying as Lord Voldemort. Once he scared a kid that happened to be on set. Anyway, I passed by this little child. I just looked at this boy. <gasps> He has burst into tears. Well, even Dan Radcliffe himself feared Rafe. As the young actor said, he was scarier than Alan Rickman in the role of Professor Snape. And that's saying something. Speaking of, Daniel Radcliffe. I'm so lucky. 
how many kids in the world would pay to be doing this right now. Yeah, he is lucky, but he almost wasn't cast as Harry. For the casting crew, choosing the boy to play the main character was a demanding challenge. Hundreds of boys auditioned for the role, but the movie crew still couldn't decide who the perfect candidate was. After all, they had so many requirements. The Harry actor had to be of a certain age, have blue or green eyes, demonstrate a specific charisma, and of course, he had to be British, according to Rowling's only British rule. So yeah, there were tons of kids who seemed right but had brown eyes or were a couple of years older, so that was a no for them. Interestingly, Chris Columbus had Dan Radcliffe on his mind for quite some time, even before the boy auditioned. He liked how Radcliffe had acted in David Copperfield, and he seemed perfect for the part. But there was a problem. Dan had no interest in playing Harry because he wanted to quit acting altogether at that point. So the producer David Heyman approached Dan's father, who was an agent, and asked him to convince his son to audition. Surprisingly, the boy agreed, so a few more auditions and screen test later, he finally got the part. That's a dragon egg. That's what that is. But where did you get it, Hagrid? Must have cost you a fortune. Wasn't he the cutest at that tender age? But, in fact, Dan doesn't like to watch his audition tape because he is super critical of how he looked in it. I absolutely think I got the role because I looked good in glasses, he once said. Nah, Dan, don't be so modest. It wasn't only because of that. What do you think about the Harry Potter casting? Was it spot on? Or would you like to see other actors playing the characters? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to see more cool content.